Okay, I think we can start. Um, hope you, you guys are all okay today. Uh, it's almost weekend. Um, <laughs> something to look out for. Um, all right, so today we're going to do things slightly different. Uh, I know in the past we have uh, done sales and operation training, so we Damon shows us a little bit of, of the operation of the devices, but uh, today we're only going to do the sales part um, due to the amount of products we've got in this uh, presentation um, and also the level of it. Um, so what we're going to do just to the theory part or this, this presentation part here, just to a few introductions to uh, some of the products we have when it comes to the project level IP. And then uh, Damon is also on the panel, so he will be able to ask uh, or answer some questions if you have any uh, regarding the product and so forth. So we're not going to do the operation part for this today, uh, but merely introducing uh, some products to you. All right, so let's quickly have a look and see what we have in store for you when it comes to uh, project level IP. And that's what the P stands for here. So previously we did the type D for distribution and type P for project level. So it's a little bit of higher level uh, product series we're going to look at today. Okay, so if we have a look at the front end um, section, so the front ends are all the cameras and things like that. I'm not going to run through all of them. You can see that we classify some as P level, so project level, distribution level, entry level, and then also special series. Now today we're going to focus mainly on the P's over here. So the P's there uh, for PDZs and so forth. So uh, not going to go through all the products. Um, some of them we have already covered, but we're mainly looking at the project level for today. On the front end side, uh, we will also look at back end side project level. So you can see how we classify uh, the different products in front end, back end, and then as well as project distribution and entry level, and then obviously special series. Okay, so for today, this is what we're going to look at. Uh, we're going to start off with the 8K Ultra HD um, cameras that we have. So the phenomenal resolution on them. Uh, we can look at the second generation Deep and View series devices, four megapixel Dark Fighter XPDZs. Uh, there's some, some special cameras like the, the Pano Views and the Fish Eyes, and this will include the second generation Fish Eye. Deep in Mind X series in VR is what makes them slightly different. Uh, some upgrades that we've done to the DF series PTZs. Uh, we can look at some 8 series cameras as well uh, that includes our Fusion Intelligent uh, functionality on them and also Behavior Analysis Server. So we're going to introduce these products today. All right, so 8K Ultra HD. What is 8K? Uh, I mean, it is phenomenal, re phenomenal resolution. Um, so where do you need this? Um, obviously large areas, you know, if you put a higher resolution camera, you can cover more with less cameras uh, or in more detail. So it depends on what your application is. Uh, typical things like football field stadiums, high sites, airports, whatever, you need high, de high definition, high detail, so forth. So why do we need it? Uh, because it's got more details. Uh, you use a single camera, like I mentioned, to cover large area to save installation cost. Those kind of things, obviously channel cost, possibly on the Higgs Central side or a channel uh, numbers on your NVRs and so forth. And then, uh, yeah, you just save um, along the way. Compared to panoramic cameras, uh, single 8K cameras have better image performances because they don't need to stitch images uh, and they support zooming uh, to see distant details. All right, so let's quickly have a look and see what we have in store for you. Look at these resolutions. It is phenomenal resolutions. You're looking at about 32 megapixel uh, resolution coming from these cameras. And that at 24 frames a second, which is extremely high. All right, so we've got different kinds of lenses. And what makes us different is that these cameras support different types of lenses, not just um, uh, different very focals and so forth, but physically different types. You can see M42 CSs, F interface type lenses and so on. So uh, it's very, very flexible when it comes to the selection of lenses. All right, uh, a lot of uh, interfaces, um, so it includes uh, three inputs, three outputs, uh, audio two inputs, one output. So you can see um, we've expanded on the in and output signs um, as well. And if you want to use them outdoors, we've got uh, the, uh, the box uh, or housings for the box cameras and so forth, which makes them IP66, uh, which means you can use them just about anywhere outside. All right, if we look at the second generation deep in view cameras, this is mainly our seven series and uh, seven series uh, cameras. Uh, we've got extremely powerful AI chips that runs GPUs and things like that that processes graphics much better. 
than your ordinary camera. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the model numbers and so forth, but you can see we've got them from the indoor box. And obviously you can put that in an outdoor housing, indoor domes, outdoor domes, bullets. So a big range on them. Just looking at the resolution, you can see from the characters over here, 2 megapixel, 4 megapixel, 8 megapixel, and 12 megapixel throughout the whole range. So we go from quite, quite a low resolution, uh, seeing as you know, 2 megapixel is low resolution for your project level um, um, uh, um, installations and so forth, projects, uh, up until 12 megapixel uh, for them. All right, so what does the second generation 7 series give you? All right, so we've got high quality images, like I just mentioned, the resolutions and the processing power that we have in these cameras, uh, meeting different monitoring requirements, uh, multiple intelligent functions. We look at what kind of intelligent functions we have in these cameras, and it's really, really easy to use. So uh, integration as well, because we do uh, offer, like in all the previous uh, presentations, I, we did speak about the integration science and how we support that. So also possible to integrate these guys. Uh, into different third-party backends. All right, so let's quickly have a look at the functions. So we're mainly looking at seven different intelligent functions. All right, so the seven functions we're looking at facial recognition, multi-target detection types. This will be including things like face and human body attribute analysis, um, perimeter protection, so to helping reduce false alarms, face counting, so that goes along with not just necessarily facial recognition, but we're doing counting of people using their faces and so forth hard hat detection. So your factories, your mines and so on, where people um, have to use uh, or have to wear hard hats, um, you can then use one of these seven series cameras to check for these things. Queue management and so forth, detecting people number in, queuing, uh, in queues and then obviously the waiting time, average waiting times of these people in the queues. And then we also have the ANPR camera. Now this one is not switchable. Uh, so the ANPR camera is an ANPR camera, right? So that's just a, um, the pure function of it. The other uh, seven series cameras can be switched between any one of these functions. So one of these at a time, uh, but it's switchable, which means you don't have to buy a camera for facial recognition. You don't have to buy another camera for multi-target, another model for that, another model for that. You buy one model and you can switch it between these different um, functions. All right, so the product showcase, uh, we've got the, uh, the indoor domes, the outdoor domes, the bullets and so forth. Uh, you see for the vehicle analysis, we only have one specific model that does vehicle uh, recognition uh, I mean for NPR usage actually. Um, so that one is not switchable, it only has that one function, we optimize it for that. But the rest of the cameras, you can see there's a whole bunch of different model numbers that can do just about any one of those six functions. We also have the dash Y, the dash Y model, you can see here at the back, uh, the model number includes the Y over there, which means that they are um, anti-corrosive uh, type of cameras. So you can use them in your uh, corrosive plants where they use corrosive materials, gases, liquids, those kind of things, or coastal areas. Um, you can use these cameras with the Y at the back, which means that they are, um, they've got anti-corrosive um, either coating or they've got the stainless steel type of housing. Depends on the grade or the rating of anti-corrosion that you need. All right, the four megapixel dark fighter. Previously, we only had two megapixel dark fighters. Uh, that was 2015 uh, normal dark fighter. 2017, we released the two megapixel dark fighter X. But now we've, oops, sorry, now we've got the four megapixel dark fighter X. All right, so a good, nice camera. I don't know if you have ever seen what the dark fighter X camera does. And now we have it in a four megapixel version. All right, so high resolution, low illumination. And I'm going to show you uh, on this next slide. Uh, what we're talking about. Okay, so if we're looking at the uh, a normal two megapixel ordinary camera, this is typically what you'll see. Dark Fighter will give you that, which is awesome. But if we look at Dark Fighter X cameras and the two and the four megapixels, look at the difference. So your Dark Fighter X camera is uh, perfect for your darker situations, wide open areas. We don't have extra lighting, uh, perimeters, those kind of things. All right, so two and four megapixel, you can see the illumination is 0 0.0005. It is dark. All right, and if we look at the large zoom capacities, we've got uh, from 25 times optical, 35 and 45 times optical zoom. Um, so fantastic large zoom ratios on, on the uh, Dark Fighter X range cameras. Then if we move over to the Panaview series cameras, so uh, we've got a dual direction Panaview. Uh, this pan of view uh, does not do any stitching. It's merely two cameras. 
Uh, you can see the two different cameras there in one housing, which makes it easier for installation. Uh, it's 1.1 cable, one IP address. Um, so it helps a lot with um, installation costs, uh, channel costs, those kind of things. All right, so options here, uh, two by five megapixels. So they can either be five megapixel cameras each or eight megapixel cameras uh, each. All right, so it depends on your application. You can see the five megapixel there and the eight megapixel over there. Low illumination uh, um, with IR there, so IR built into them. Dual direction monitoring because you can point these cameras in different directions. So fantastic for passages. You need to look up and down the passage uh, where one camera you know, on either side will be two installation um, points, two costs, uh, all those kind of things. So it's good to have one unit that can look in multiple directions at the same time. There's a three axis uh, um, swivel that they can swivel on. So they can point in just about any direction that you want to. Dual lenses in one camera, saving IP licenses. So if you use this camera, maybe with a third party VMS that you require an IP, uh, a license per IP address, this will give you two cameras in one IP address, saving you the, the cost of the licenses. So application, corridors, escalators, around the corner, those kind of things. So you can see and, and, and have an idea of where we can use these, uh, these cameras, fantastic little units. They're actually quite small, you can see their uh, cell phone, a little bit lower. All right, so small uh, units, uh, not very obtrusive, um, and they can look in any direction as the guy is showing us there right now. All right, so we can understand where we can use these things. Uh, so escalators, so you look up and down, corridors, around the corners, so you install it on the corner itself. The one looks down that way, the other one looks down this way, uh, as you can see over there, all right? Um, so great use here, uh, small little camera, fantastic, five or eight megapixel uh, on each lens. All right, then we have the quad directional uh, pan of view. So this is similar to the previous one, but it's got four cameras built in. So they come in a four by five megapixel lenses. So there's four lenses inside the unit. You can see one, two, three, four over there. Uh, five megapixel each, which brings you to a total of 20 megapixels. But you will see the cameras individually, as in four different, uh, four separate uh, video streams that will come into your, your NVR. Um, motorized zoom lenses. So you can, with a click of a button, zoom them in and out, 2.8 to 8 millimeters there. Uh, and dual axis adjustment uh, for each one of them independently. 360 degree IR, so the IR is built into this part of the housing here, so you get infrared up to 30 meters uh, coverage in any direction. Uh, the integrated design, again, we've got one IP address, you've got one thing to install, one cable to pull in, uh, one channel, uh, um, uh, one port on your NVR to use there. Um, and then also, yeah, I didn't mention this on the previous slide, but it's compatible already with the iSeries NVRs and Hig Central 1.4. And we are already sitting at a uh, much newer version Hig Centrals there, and the iSeries have been integrated a long time ago. So uh, already compatible with all of our backend systems. This is a typical uh, installation of where this camera has been used. A nice big parking lot, uh, one point of installation, one pole. So you can see that you're saving a lot of cost get this uh, camera to more or less a center and you point the cameras in any direction that you want, any one of the four directions, um, and you import this into your NVR. So uh, much easier, much nicer. You can imagine the cost of the pole to plant that, the pole itself, the installation points, the cabling, all those kind of things. Now you put one camera, it covers all the directions all at the same time. All right, then our new second generation fisheye camera. Uh, this comes in a version where you, um, uh, like a flush mount in ceiling mount, basically, so it's less obtrusive again. Uh, and then just to show you the different kinds of views, you can see the video playing there, different kinds of views that you can see and watch this uh, fisheye in. Uh, it all depends on the application of what you want to do. Um, so, yeah, it does, uh, it's got AI built in as well, which means that it looks for humans and vehicles, can do people counting. Uh, can do heat mapping, can do pathway analysis. So quite a bit built into this uh, this little camera here. Uh, it covers such a such a wide area.
Okay. All right, now how about the DeepenMind X series in VR? What does this do? All right, so the X series in VR, DeepenMind in VR, uh, three functions in one. So video structuralization, so up to four video channel analysis for human bodies and vehicles. All right, that's obviously supported from that uh, firmware version 4.22, but we already passed that. Facial recognition, libraries, 32 libraries, up to 100,000 faces in the library, uh, sorry, in, in, in total for in the database. Uh, up to 16 channel face ca face picture comparison and up to ch uh, eight channel face captures that this can be uh, this can do and also perimeter protection so you can see the three different functions here and this perimeter protection is obviously with false alarm reduction which means that it looks for humans or vehicles we have two different variances so the 77 series and the 96 series over there uh, but to know which one is which ids more intelligent series in vr and the nxi gives it away deep in mind and then the new X series. So you'll see forward slash X at the back, which will tell you it's this guy over here with all three of these functions. So it is switchable. So you need to switch it over from this, ver this, this mode to that mode to that mode. But again, you buy one unit and you don't have to worry about, did I get the right unit? Uh, did I install the correct one? And so forth. Just switch over the mode uh, into whatever mode that you, uh, that you need it in. All right, so just to quickly give you, or I'll just recap on that. So human body and vehicle uh, um, attributes that it can do. So it extracts for the human body side, gender, age, if you're wearing the glasses or not, uh, if you, you know, looking at your top color, so your, either your jacket or your shirt color and things like that, are you wearing or carrying a backpack or suitcase or something, are you on a bicycle? So it, it classifies that for humans and for vehicles, it classifies the type and the color. So the type will be, you know, is it a bus? Is it a car? Is it a van? Is it a, okay, it won't say Bucky, right? So that's, that's South African and only South African. So uh, it'll say truck. Okay, so you can see the classification that this uh, thing can do. And then obviously, because it does the classification, you can also do a search afterwards. So you can tell the NVR, listen, I'm looking for uh, a male of age, let's say middle age, wearing glasses with a red shirt on, um, and so forth, and it'll, it'll filter out those, those criteria for you. So it's much easier to find things, and obviously the same for the vehicles. So much easier, much quicker to find your results. And this is already compatible with our IBM S4200. All right, here's a quick little video of what that uh, DeepMind X series NVR does. You can see on the left hand side all the classifications. So it does the humans and vehicles, the, the coloring of See, uh, this guy's on a bicycle over there, black shirt that this guy's wearing, male over there. Uh, so you can see all the classifications done all at the same time uh, on the deep money in VR. Okay, so fantastic there. And obviously when it comes to the, the, the searches, you can search them by picture. So you can search by gender, age, class, or stops, color, baggage, or bicycle. Um, so which makes your searches much quicker, much faster, uh, much easier. You don't have to sit through hours and hours and hours of footage where you need to find it yourself. The system can do it all for you. All right, so criteria was put in for a red shirt, a uh, guy uh, not wearing backpack, uh, not carrying a backpack or anything like that. And there you can see it is quick and easy to find a specific event. All right, we can also search by picture. So we can import a picture or you can grab it from one of the previous recordings and then you can search for this picture, similar pictures to this, and it'll show you all the cameras where it picked up this particular guy. Uh, again, much easier and quicker to find specific incidents. I mean, how much time would that save you in uh, investigation times and all those kind of things, kind of find incidents and all those kind of things. So it'll definitely help you save a lot of time. All right, so search by appearance. So this is for vehicle and vehicle color. Uh, so you can see they're looking for a saloon car, red obviously, and it shows all the red saloon cars that it picked up. And then you can go by plate number or change the colors or do whatever you want to. Um, and then search for the specific items. Much quicker, again, much easier to find your specific incidents. Right, what do we do to the DF series PTZs? What did we upgrade? Okay, so let's quickly have a look. Auto tracking from 2.0 to 3.0. This is a big, biggie, biggie, biggie. 
Uh, I'm going to show you now in the next video is not just auto tracking on humans and vehicles, it takes that to the next level. We've upgraded to the, uh, the zoom, the optical zoom from 36 to up to 42 optical zoom now. It's a fantastic zoom there, My, uh, long range uh, zooms over there. Uh, electric, uh, oh sorry, uh, electrical image stabilizer. So that's a software image stabilizer. If your camera's mounted to a pole or whatever, we'll use software to stabilize the image. But what we've done now is we moved over to hardware. So put in a gyroscope there uh, inside the lens. Uh, so do an optical image stabilizer. Uh, IR has been upgraded from 200 or 250 meters, depending on which unit you have, to 400 and 500 meters now. And obviously a lot more robust uh, on these devices. So fantastic upgrades for the DF series domes. Uh, but let me show you the video of mainly what I mean with this guy over here. All right, so auto tracking 3.0, what does it do? So initially starting with auto tracking 1.0, this is your normal object tracking it triggers, it gets triggered by any object. So anything uh, that moves or whatever, triggers a line crossing, intrusion detection, whatever the case might be, uh, the camera will track it. Auto tracking 2.0, the upgrade to that is that it was only triggered by humans or vehicles. So the AI built in to make it auto tracking 2.0 or smart tracking 2.0, it's the same thing. Uh, but now it filters out nonsense alarms and, um, sorry, nonsense alarms and only focuses on humans and vehicles. All right, so what does auto tracking 3.0 do? 3.0 do? It's still based on humans and vehicles, but based on more details. So we've got a fantastic algorithm running on this camera that will identify certain people or, you know, uh, people in groups of vehicles, lots of vehicles on the highway possibly and so on. But let me show you rather than telling you. All right, so tracking people, see this guy. Okay, I know that's a low quality video, but you can see the guy with the white shirt on. Hiding between or behind other people, the camera will find him and track him all the way. Although there are other people with white shirts on and so forth, uh, the camera will not lose track of this person. Okay, so that's what auto tracking 3.0 does for humans. What does it do for vehicles? Select a specific vehicle on a busy, busy, busy highway, and it keeps track of that within a group of other uh, vehicles, possibly even similar vehicles to that, but it will not lose uh, focus on that particular vehicle. So you can see there's multiple white vehicles and so forth, but it keeps visual on that one specific vehicle that you need. All right, so that is what auto tracking 3.0 does for humans and for vehicles. All right, it helps a lot. With auto tracking 2.0, it'll just follow a human or a vehicle, but now it's much more specific. All right, the gyroscope image stabilization, uh, what has happened before with electronic image stabilizer on, uh, it does stabilize the video a, a little bit and so forth, but now with um, hardware built in, you can see the stabilization is much better now. Um, so a nice feature built into the camera. Now, where would we use this? Typically a camera that's been mounted on a very high pole, uh, you've got serious winds blowing, whatever, it shakes the pole up and your image is blurring so much you cannot see what's happening. And that's where the EIS or the GIS will come in. So the hardware side is obviously better. We have this now in the DF series domes that'll stabilize your image much more, meaning that you can keep focus on uh, the different objects that you need to, need to watch. All right, next up, eight series cameras, fusion intelligence. All right, so our eight series camera, uh, what it does basically, it's like two cameras built into one. All right, so you can see uh, there's a camera lens at the bottom, there's a camera lens inside the housing over there. What does it do? It gives you 160 degrees horizontal field of view. It is wide, it is really, really wide. This guy over here, dual very focal lenses. So this one is a fixed lens and that's a, that's a very focal lens over there. But here we've got dual very focal lenses in this version over here. This one, uh, similar to that, but with Dark Fighter X technology. And then this is the standard version. Still two cameras, one there, one there. Uh, but the functionality is like this. Okay, so there's multiple algorithms running. So the intelligence parts uh, comes in here. So Fusion Intelligent uh, products can meet the requirement of multiple algorithms in the same scene. They are helpful to save the cost of purchase, installation, and maintenance. All right, multiple lenses. Uh, intelligent projects have multiple lenses which are able to see details while monitoring large views. 
All right, so normally the bottom camera will cover an extremely wide angle and the top one will focus on very specific items within that type of scene. All right, I also have a video for you on this to maybe make maybe explain it a little bit better. Okay, so here's the Fusion Intelligence uh, camera, again, with intelligence built in to do classification, uh, supports multiple target detection based on deep learning, uh, like I mentioned, because of the AI built in. Uh, so it does face capture, human body capture, face and human analysis features, uh, or feature analysis, and facial recognition, all in one. Okay, again, so you can see multiple functions built into one single camera, or one single unit, uh, two cameras built into the unit, um, for one for wide coverage, one for close-ups, and then obviously for human bodies, faces, features, all those kind of things, all in one. All right, so fantastic cameras, again, saving a lot of cost uh, with installation, with channel numbers, and all those kind of things, much easier to use as well. All right, and lastly, the behavior analysis server. So what does the behavior analysis server do? Okay, this guy has got up to 27 different kinds of behaviors in up to four different scenes, all right? I will explain this a little bit better now. Uh, powerful video and analysis capabilities, uh, and it depends on the channel, uh, um, the, the amount of channels. So we've got a 16, 24, 32, and a 64 channel in this guy over here. And each channel supports analysis of up to eight different behaviors at the same time. So this is not dependent on the camera, it's the server that does the work, all right? So analysis of both real-time video and video recording uh, that it can do. So we can do uh, real-time alarms and we can do uh, searches within the recordings for certain things. I'm going to show you now what this can do. Uh, and I'm talking about the 27 different kinds of behaviors. Standalone mode or cluster mode. All right, so standalone mode, I can just use the one unit or I can put it into cluster mode where I manage this with a whole bunch of these units uh, all together. So it supports cluster deployment to meet balanced loads. All right, so they will balance in between. So if you've got maybe four of them uh, and you get a lot from the cameras and so forth, it'll start balancing it between the, uh, the behavior analysis server. So not necessarily a dedicated camera here, dedicated camera there and so forth. Uh, it'll do load balance. So maximum 30 of these servers in one cluster in under cluster mode. All right, which platforms are compatible with it already? The 4200, Hick Central from version 1.5, uh, that's Hick Central Pro and Hick Central Enterprise from 1.1. All right, so if we use, uh, if we want to use it in cluster mode like this, we need to use Hick Central Enterprise version 1.1 to be able to support this cluster mode. Otherwise, for the other platforms, you can use it in a standalone mode. All right, so what are we talking about this 27 different kind of behaviors? Um, so we know of obviously line crossing, intrusion detection, and those kind of things, but what else can we possibly come up with? Let's have a look. Getting up detection, so people standing up from chairs, climbing detection, absence uh, detection, sleeping on duty. I think this is a biggie uh, for South African control rooms and so forth. A big, big, big thing there that we need to look at. Uh, overstaying detection, so maybe possibly vehicles staying uh, in a parking lot too long. Sudden change of sound intensity, abnormal number of people detection. So that could typically be a strike or a crowd detection and so on. Physical conflict, people fighting. Uh, standing up detection, or oh, getting up, standing up, we've already got that there. People counting, key person getting up. So you're looking at a specific person getting up. Regional overstaying, fast moving detection, people gathering, falling down detection, physical conflict detection again, that's more for street users and so forth, perimeters. Uh, line crossing, intrusion, region entrance and exit, that, those ones we have, but loitering, parking, unattended baggage, object removal, trained analysis, that this can do people density analysis, real time people counting, uh, and obviously a normal people counting over there. So you can see up to 27 different kinds of analysis that this behavior analysis server can do. It's a fantastic unit. Please have a look at this and um, see where you can possibly use this at your you know, different kinds of applications that your, your clients might have. All right, so just a quick idea uh, absence detection or sleep on duty is a typical example. Um, so you can see this guy is sleeping at the red uh, triggers over there. People gathering, so you can set different areas where multiple people or a certain amount of people uh, are gathering. Uh, falling down detection over there. We've got uh, overstaying, so it's like a, almost like a loitering, almost a person in, in the area for too long. 
personal conflict, people starting to fight, riots, strikes, those kind of things, and then people density. Okay, so providing density alarms and real-time people numbers. Uh, so that's uh, a big, also again, you could possibly use it at you know, airports, um, strikes, riots, those kind of things, and possibly for social distancing these days as well. If there's too many people in a certain area, uh, then it poses a risk uh, for infection. So uh, you can see where this behavior analysis server could be used, and it's a fantastic machine. All right, that concludes it for today's uh, theory part. Um, if you have any questions about it, please pop them in the Q&A box, and Damon and I will answer as many as we can. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we will keep the Zoom link open for another few minutes to answer some questions, and uh, hope to see you next week. Thanks.